Praise the Lord. Gay and lesbian culture, the defiant monster whose most powerful weapons include worldwide fraud and sexual humiliation, has been exposed, and the gay and lesbian surge has failed. In 2008, I learned that people were listening into the homes and businesses of others by connecting high power antennas to their wireless phones. They dial the landline telephone numbers in the homes and businesses and can hear what the people inside are saying, even though the landline phones do not actually ring and nobody answers them. The antennas were obtained by first ordering Wi-Fi service, then removing the antennas that come with the Wi-Fi components. As this presentation unfolds, many of you will recognize the people that use or continue to use the high power antenna wireless phone units. You'll learn their reasons and purposes for using them and the consequences that have followed. And I believe that at the end of this presentation, you will agree with me about many important things, including number one, there can no longer be any tolerance for gay and lesbian behavior, including any legal, political, social, cultural, or economic support for gays and lesbians. Any society that ignores those words cannot be a rational or intelligent society. Two, next to our violent enemies in the war on terror, gays and lesbians are the worst people that exist in our society, and gay and lesbian culture is one of the most criminal of all. A gay or lesbian American is a bad American. And number three, if we morally and ethically rid this society of gay and lesbian sex and culture, then we will experience a renaissance that will include freedom as it has never existed in this country and all of Western civilization before. My experience with high power antennas began years ago. There were many girls and women in a crazy family that were interested in knowing more about me. As time passed, rather than use civilized means to get me to pay more attention to them, many family members began talking disrespectfully about me. This was designed to force me to talk to them and to influence my behaviors. Their choice of tactics was due to bad parenting, the negative effects of the gay and lesbian sex that many of their family members participated in, and the instructions from other gays and lesbians that they were implementing. Eventually, the family members began to wonder if the reason I was not interested in talking to them was because I had learned about the gay and lesbian sex that was prevalent in their family. So one of the family members asked his gay friends that he was having gay sex with how he could learn more about what I was doing and what I thought about their family. That's when they told him about the high power antennas they were using and which were in widespread use in the rest of the gay and lesbian community. So in the latter half of 2007, the family members and gay friends of the family members began listening to me with the high power antennas. By the end of 2008, there were approximately two dozen family members listening to me. By early in 2009, people in 12 to 15 homes were listening to me, including people who lived on my street, other streets in my neighborhood, and other neighborhoods. At certain times, people in as many as seven to eight homes were listening to me at the same time. In the latter half of 2008, <clears throat> I started paying closer attention to certain people around me <clears throat> that were talking about me or repeating information about me. I believe these people obtained the information from the crazy family and gay friends of the crazy family who were using the high power antennas. Some of the people that were repeating the information were doing so with the intent of letting me hear them, as if they wanted me to know that they had obtained information about me. This was harassment and intimidation. Other people I heard as I walked by them or around them while they were talking without them knowing that I was able to hear them. These people were everywhere in society, the gyms, my neighborhood, 
grocery stores, retail stores, restaurants, office buildings, shooting ranges, and other places that I visited. I was also trying to determine which of the people talking about me were also using high power antennas. What I learned was that almost all of them were using high power antennas. As I looked more closely, I also noticed that gay or lesbian behavior was the link that connected all of the people using the high power antennas and almost all of the people that I had ever heard repeat information that I believed was obtained by people using high power antennas. <clears throat> the people using the high power antennas consisted of openly and closeted gays and lesbians. The closeted gays and lesbians were the most vocal and critical of the people that I heard talking about me as I moved about society. In addition, what I learned about a large number of these people is that they had gay or lesbian sex for the first time in their childhoods and are still participating in gay or lesbian sex. I'm not saying that all the people that have had gay or lesbian sex in their childhoods were using the high power antennas or that all of them are now openly or closeted gays or lesbians. But a large number of the people that I discovered were openly or closeted gays and lesbians were also people that had gay or lesbian sex in their childhoods and were using the high power antennas. I'll discuss later how I believe these people were substantially damaged by gay or lesbian sex and reasons why they are not able to leave gay and lesbian sex in their pasts. Furthermore, I initially thought that some of the people that were using the high power antennas were heterosexuals. And I thought that they were heterosexuals that had gay or lesbian sex in their childhoods or some other time in their pasts and were provided the high power antennas by the openly or closeted gays and lesbians for that reason. But I have since learned that the people that I thought were heterosexuals were individual closeted gays or lesbians and gay man, lesbian woman couples disguised as heterosexuals. I call them fraudulent heterosexuals. There were heterosexuals that were not openly or closeted gays and lesbians that were receiving some information about me from people that were. This was information that was circulating in the gay and lesbian community, some of which was obtained by listening to my house and business with high power antennas. However, I believe there were common criteria used in determining which heterosexuals receive that information. These were heterosexuals that were friends, family members, or co-workers of the openly and closeted gays and lesbians who were using the high power antennas that also had gay or lesbian sex in their pasts. The heterosexuals were also people that gays and lesbians perceived as not having too much influence, power, or success and were not able to get accurate and significant amounts of information about the people around them from anyone outside of the gay and lesbian community. These heterosexuals were perceived as people that just didn't have the connections and networking to figure out what was really going on in their community and thus more easily influenced by the gays and lesbians that interacted with them. Some of the heterosexuals didn't understand why they qualified for receiving that information. In reality, those heterosexuals were being prepared by gays and lesbians for receiving the high power antennas with gay or lesbian sex as a condition for receiving them. Also, some of the closeted gays and lesbians that were perceived as having too much influence, power, or success, or that didn't associate, associate properly with the openly and closeted gays or lesbians or with heterosexuals, were not offered high power antennas. Now I also noticed other common behaviors of the gays and lesbians who were using the high power antennas. Number one, 
These are people who are habitual liars. Number two, they're habitually and excessively critical of others. They often use the words gay and fag as criticisms of others. This is particularly true for the closeted gays and lesbians. They are also people who are harshly and un unnecessarily critical of other people's parents. They are gossipers and trash talkers, particularly with regard to sexual behaviors of other people. The gays and lesbians who are using the high power antennas are people that maintain what I call vicarious relationships. They pretend to know or have a relationship with the people they are criticizing or talking trash about or with those close to the people they are criticizing or talking trash about. But in reality, they're getting their information from gossip in the gay and lesbian community, from high power antennas, eavesdropping, and in other immoral and illegal ways. They are also duplicitous people. They cannot consistently act or speak respectfully to others. They cannot say or do something good or respectful without following it with something bad or disrespectful. I learned that gays and lesbians must be duplicitous towards heterosexuals in order to stay in good standing in the gay and lesbian community. The gays and lesbians who use the high power antennas are people who have taken it upon themselves to keep heterosexuals in check by unnecessarily criticizing and withholding kindnesses from them. They'll rationalize their behavior by saying that you can't make it too easy on the people they're criticizing or let them have their way too easily. These are fraudulent excuses designed to hide systemic defiance and harassment against heterosexuals. They participate in what I call anticipatory breach. In the law, anticipatory breach is when one person sues another because he thinks the other person is going to break a contract that they have between them. Likewise, the gays and lesbians regularly criticize heterosexuals to keep heterosexuals from criticizing them first. Gays and lesbians want heterosexuals to know that they know something damaging about them, something sexual or particularly embarrassing or bad, to keep the heterosexuals from criticizing them, especially for their gay and lesbian behaviors. The gays and lesbians who were using the high power antennas as a group are less patriotic than most people. The gays and lesbians are not in favor of the freedom and free enterprise that enables some people to become substantially more powerful, influential, or successful than others. They are politically far left, collectivist, or communist. If gays and lesbians are not liberal enough, they'll be more harshly criticized and possibly ostracized permanently by the gay and lesbian community as a result. And also they are willing in substantial numbers to use technology to embarrass, harass, and gain power over others. Considering these characteristics, I believe that the high power antennas are simply an extension of the behaviors that gay and lesbians have practiced towards heterosexuals for God knows how long. Now, I want to talk about the reasons why there was such a high number of gays and lesbians using high power antennas to listen to me and talking about me. First, because of my Christian beliefs. Based upon my understanding of the Bible, I believe that gay and lesbian behaviors and culture should receive absolutely no political, legal, social, cultural, or economic support or recognition in this country or anywhere else around the world. So I can understand why gays and lesbians wouldn't like me and why they would be critical of me. But that doesn't justify gays and lesbians use of high power antennas and other illegal and immoral tactics against me. Using the high power antennas was one of many gay and lesbian tactics that was supposed to intimidate me, embarrass me, give them power over me, and discourage me from practicing real Christianity. Secondly, 
Many gays and lesbians have spread rumors about me being gay or having gay sex, even as recent as within the last month. Gays and lesbians have passed the rumors around as if they were true, which constantly brings attention on me from other gays and lesbians. As time passed, the attention of many gays and lesbians took the form of high power antennas. But their focus on sexual rumors goes to the core of what makes gays and lesbians tick and what they don't want heterosexuals to know. Gays and lesbians focus on people that have or are rumored to have gay or lesbian sex in their past because they don't want them to be too influential, powerful, or successful, or to live their lives without being chained to the gay and lesbian community or going along with whatever garbage the gays and lesbians throw at them. The reason for their desire for control over others that have gay or lesbian sex in their pasts is that the gays and lesbians believe that gay or lesbian sex has damaged them psychologically, emotionally, socially, culturally, and economically to the point where they can never be all that they want to be. There is no such thing as being gay or lesbian and fulfilling your God-given purposes in life. And that realization leads gays and lesbians to want to keep others who have or are rumored to have gay or lesbian sex from having too much influence, power, or success in life. What the gay and lesbian community has in mind for individual gays and lesbians is far less than what the individual gays and lesbians truly want for their own lives. Thirdly, another reason why so many gays and lesbians were listening to me with high power antennas was because my situation with the crazy family was causing too much worry in the gay and lesbian community, in particular with the closeted gays and lesbians. Many people knew of the disrespectful words the crazy family members were speaking against me, but the gay and lesbian crowd was aware of the gay and lesbian behavior that existed in the crazy family and that the family was hiding their gay and lesbian behaviors from the public at large. The gay and lesbian crowd didn't want me and other heterosexuals to understand <clears throat> that the crazy family's behaviors were part of gay and lesbian culture. Therefore, the gays and lesbians wanted me to solve my problems with the crazy family as soon as possible. So the gays and lesbians were pressuring me by criticizing me and trying to make my life more difficult with high power antennas. Now there are other reasons why gays and lesbians use the high power antennas and other tactics. <clears throat> First of all, harassment of heterosexuals not supportive of gays and lesbians for any reason. Many of the gays and lesbians believe that if you constantly harass a person with high power antennas and other tactics, that you can ruin that person's business, family, personal and social relationships, or make it substantially more difficult to have good relationships with others because of the gossip and other negative information about them being spread around. The crazy family believe that by using high power antennas and other tactics, they could keep heterosexual men from having romantic relationships with women and getting married. Some gays and lesbians appear to be having a contest to determine whose life they could severely disrupt or frustrate with the use of high power antennas and other tactics. The gays and lesbians want to make themselves look powerful by disrupting people's lives and causing them noticeable problems. Also, another reason why gays and lesbians use the high power antennas and other tactics is that according to gay and lesbian culture, gay and lesbians aren't supposed to get information or anything going on in their lives in more respectful ways, respectable ways. Gays and lesbians believe that if they obtain information about heterosexuals with high power antennas and other tactics, 
then they can use that information to obtain status and other benefits in the gay and lesbian community. They can trade that information with other gays and lesbians or use the information they obtain to show the access they have to such information. Why wouldn't the gays and lesbians just ask heterosexuals for that information? I'll discuss that later. Also, gays and lesbians use the high power antennas and other tactics to learn financial, sexual, and other sensitive private information about other people, in particular people of high interest. Gays and lesbians do this in a vicarious manner, pretending that they obtained the information directly from the person they were listening to, or from another person that had a direct relationship with the person they were listening to. Also, gays and lesbians want to know people's past gay and lesbian sexual behaviors because they believe that if they can get those people to talk about those behaviors, then they can possibly induce them to participate in them again. And lastly, gays and lesbians use the high power antennas and other tactics as part of their anticipatory breach that I mentioned earlier. Many of the gays and lesbians cannot stand heterosexuals criticizing their sexual orientation or are scared of heterosexuals discovering their closeted lifestyles. So they'll use the high power antennas and other tactics to get information about heterosexuals around them first. They'll also use the information to harass heterosexuals or to influence heterosexuals' behaviors, whether those heterosexuals criticize them or not. I had my landline at home disconnected on July 20th of 2009. Prior to the landline being removed, I spoke with local law enforcement beginning on Christmas Eve in 2008. After the landline was removed, I spoke to local law enforcement, the FBI, the FCC, and other people. I believe there were people within those agencies that knew of the existence of technology that enables people to listen into homes and businesses. However, I don't believe they were, they were aware that all one needed to do to obtain such technology was order Wi-Fi. In mid-2010, I spoke with a San Antonio City Councilman, State Senator, and representatives from my state and U.S. representatives' offices. I strongly emphasized the large number of gays and lesbians that were using the high power antennas and the negative effects of gay and lesbian sex in childhood. Many gays and lesbians became less vocal and stopped hanging out in places that I visited. I attribute their responses to the truth of the words that I spoke. Gay and lesbian behavior, for the large majority of its participants, is based in voluntary gay and lesbian sex during childhood. The gay and lesbian sex results in negative psychological, emotional, social, cultural, and economic effects on the participants. Once the gay or lesbian sex is discovered, the immediate negative effects include shame, embarrassment, confusion, and a change in relationships with other people, including gays and lesbians, heterosexuals, friends, and family members. Also, even if a person chooses to not be gay or lesbian after being found out for gay or lesbian sex, that person might still lose friends, lose respect from other people, and experience increased isolation that can have damaging effects. To various extents, the people found out, found out for gay or lesbian sex lose access, both voluntarily and involuntarily, to the heterosexual world. 
including losing access to information discussed among heterosexuals that were their former friends, classmates, and acquaintances. Also, once people are found out for gay or lesbian sex, it's difficult for them to get heterosexuals to treat them similar to how they were treated before. This is a major reason why many of them choose to be gay or lesbian. They can't get heterosexuals to respond to them the way they want them to respond and interact. They lose the power and influence they had among heterosexuals. Sexual desire is also a major reason why people found out for gay or lesbian sex choose to be gays or lesbians. They believe that since they've participated extensively in gay or lesbian sex, they're not going to be able to get heterosexual sex the way they want and with whom they want. If their past gay or lesbian sex makes them so undesirable and drastically decreases their chances at getting the sex and relationships they want from heterosexuals, then they believe that for sexual satisfaction, they're better off being gay or lesbian. This loss of the ability to have heterosexual sex the way they want also intensifies their defiance towards heterosexuals and their jealousy of heterosexuals. Obviously, the closeted gays and lesbians do not want to be known for gay or lesbian behavior, but they continue in part because of the sex. Shame is another major reason why people found out for gay or lesbian sex choose to be closeted gays or lesbians. They don't want heterosexuals to learn of their participation in gay or lesbian sex, and they don't want to ever have to explain their past behaviors and the reasons for those behaviors. They are ashamed of themselves and are fearful of allowing heterosexuals to know their participation in gay or lesbian sex. Now, depending upon whether they choose to be openly or closeted gay or lesbian, they have to learn a new set of rules that is very different than the rules for heterosexuals. Both being in the closet and being openly gay or lesbian have distinct sets of rules. For those that choose to be gay or lesbian, there develops defiance, bitterness, anger, jealousy, selfishness, and mean-spirited behavior towards heterosexuals. The gays and lesbians begin dwelling on and talking about other people's sexual mistakes and other embarrassing and humiliating incidents that have occurred in their lives. This exemplifies the gay and lesbian community. The gays and lesbians gather the sexual mistakes and other embarrassing incidents in other people's lives and use them against them whenever they feel it is appropriate. The loss of information from the heterosexual world and the rules of gay and lesbian behavior create a culture of defiance that explains why the gays and lesbians use high power antennas and other tactics to obtain information from heterosexuals. The gays and lesbians don't want to ask heterosexuals for information or interact with them in normal relationships. This is because the heterosexual world, according to the gays and lesbians' perception and self-pity, is the world that rejected them, ridiculed them for their gay or lesbian sex, and let them down. The gays and lesbians don't want to give the heterosexual world credibility and respect. Also, Individual gays and lesbians will face criticism and loss of benefits, including sex, from other gays and lesbians if they interact normally with heterosexuals. Gays and lesbians try to make the gay and lesbian world look as attractive and fulfilling as possible to heterosexuals. And they also try to appear as uninterested as possible in the heterosexual world. This explains the arrogant, proud behaviors that I've noticed among countless gays and lesbians. And these intentionally negative behaviors towards heterosexuals that are a part of the gay and lesbian culture of defiance are a huge part of what we call the coarsening of America.
There is, in addition to a culture of defiance, a culture of fraud that exemplifies the gay and lesbian community. The fraud, the fraud is designed to hide not only the true causes of gay and lesbian behavior, but the identities of the closeted gays and lesbians. The fraud is designed to mislead heterosexuals and keep them ignorant about all things gay and lesbian. Gays and lesbians are habitual liars because they want to make heterosexuals look like they don't know what they're talking about in all transactions that involve gays and lesbians. But the closeted gays and lesbians, by remaining hidden, can carry out various functions for themselves and the openly gays and lesbians without heterosexuals knowing what they're doing. And for those who don't already know, it is the official duty of the closeted gays and lesbians and one of their supreme roles to promote tolerance and when around certain people indifference to gay and lesbian behaviors and political and legal rights. But if the closeted gays and lesbians do not promote tolerance or do a good enough job promoting it, they will lose status and other benefits and gain more criticism from the gay and lesbian community. There is also a culture of intimidation, harassment, and humiliation that exemplifies the gay and lesbian community. The gays and lesbians try to keep people from speaking about the true causes of gay and lesbian behavior and from finding out who are the closeted gays and lesbians? They do this by, among other tactics, spreading the sexual mistakes, in particular gay or lesbian sexual mistakes, of anyone critical of them, and lying and spreading rumors with the hope of destroying the reputations and relationships of people critical of them. In order to increase their power over others and obtain more control in our society, it is preferable by the gay and lesbian community to get heterosexuals to participate in gay or lesbian sex. Many people that do not support gays and lesbians, but also have gay or lesbian sex in their childhoods or at any other time in their lives, are greatly afraid of those behaviors being known by the entire world or of being constantly harassed for them by the gay and lesbian community. But I believe it's even worse if an adult has a gay or le lesbian episode because it's seen as less likely to be excused as youthful bad judgment. Also, I've heard many people that were formerly gay or lesbian talk about the reasons why they were gay or lesbian. But none of the former gays and lesbians I heard that participated in childhood gay or lesbian sex told the whole truth. Some said that being gay or lesbian is all about sex. Others said that being gay or lesbian was about their, their looks or lack of good parenting or drug use. But not one of them said that the reason why most gays and lesbians are the way they are is because of voluntary gay and lesbian sex in their childhoods and the negative effects that followed therefrom. Not one of them described how vicious gays and lesbians are towards other gays and lesbians or the culture of fraud and defiance. So it's fair to say that the culture of intimidation, harassment, and humiliation employed by existing gays and lesbians has been successful in keeping former gays and lesbians who have gay or lesbian sex in their childhoods from telling the whole truth. A major problem that gays and lesbians have with people that have gay or lesbian sex in their pasts and are now critical of those behaviors and gays and lesbians in general is that those still involved in gay or lesbian behaviors don't believe that there is any acceptable way out of being gay or lesbian. They believe that if they abandon their gay or lesbian behaviors, they're going to suffer in many ways for participating in gay or lesbian sex and for carrying out fraud. They believe that people will hold their pasts and their lives against them to an intolerable extent. 
When considering changing their lives, gays and lesbians probably ask themselves, what are we supposed to do with all the lies that we've been telling people all these years about gays and lesbians? This perceived lack of an acceptable, acceptable way out of being gay or lesbian explains why gays and lesbians believe there is a need for substantial harassment of former gays and lesbians. But it's not just your sexual behaviors that the gays and lesbians use to harass and intimidate you. It's all of your mistakes and embarrassments in life. What they really want you to do is lie about those mistakes when you're confronted with them. They'll then take your lies out on the town to make you look as bad as possible. If they still can't get you to respond to them the way they want you to, then they'll try to get to your family members, friends, co-workers, and other people around you. They want to lecture those people as to why they shouldn't support you and why it's wrong for them to say nothing about your behaviors that the gays and lesbians don't like. If gays and lesbians are not successful in changing your behaviors, they'll try to get to your family members, friends, and co-workers. If those people don't comply with the gays and lesbians, the non-compliance is supposed to cause controversy to swirl around them, including harassment and trash-talking from gays and lesbians. This system of harassment and attempted control of other people's lives fits the descriptions of witchcraft and sorcery in the Bible. Ultimately, gays and lesbians want to undermine the lives of heterosexuals who have gay or lesbian sex in their pasts by destroying their reputations, their relationships with others, their economic opportunities and success, the sources of their income, any significant power and influence they have in society, and their confidence in their understanding of the world. Why? To cause the heterosexuals to start looking for help and asking for help from others. Once the confused heterosexuals go out looking and asking for answers and help, the gay and lesbian crowd attempts to close in on them in order to tell those people the answers to their problems and failures. And what is the gay and lesbian answer? That the gay or lesbian sex in the confused heterosexuals past is the cause of their failures and problems. How do I know this? This is what gays and lesbians told the crazy family was the reason I didn't want anything to do with them and was not responding to them. The gays and lesbians hope that if they can get the confused heterosexuals to believe that, then it will lead the heterosexuals to being highly critical of others because they believe that others are holding their past gay or lesbian sex against them. This process of becoming highly critical of others is what many gays and lesbians remain bitter about. They're bitter because gays and lesbians didn't give them the truth and trick them with a very selfish worldview that was designed to induce them to have gay or lesbian sex. In some cases, they're bitter because heterosexuals didn't come to them and tell them to stop the raunchy, unnecessary trash talking and gossiping and the consequences that would follow. They're bitter because heterosexuals started avoiding them because of their behaviors and didn't take enough time out of their lives to stop them from going down the wrong path. What they'll later learn is that that level of disgusting behavior is what will turn off many heterosexuals from wanting to be around them and will shrink the world of available options and help. However, that disgusting behavior will attract gays and lesbians. At first, it might be only the closeted gays and lesbians who will be supportive or at least indifferent and not discourage that behavior. But their aim is to take the confused heterosexuals trash talking out on the town so everybody know, everybody will know the disgusting things the heterosexuals are saying. This is how the gays and lesbians attempt to shrink the heterosexuals world into being a gay or lesbian world and induce heterosexuals to participate in gay, and le gay or lesbian sex. 
once the heterosexuals realize that their disgusting behaviors, what their disgusting behaviors have done, there is a greater chance that they will succumb to gay or lesbian sex. By that time, the world of people that desires to be around or help the heterosexuals is entirely, or almost entirely, gay and lesbian. Many people choose to live as gays or lesbians because they've determined that the gay, or lesbian, the gay and lesbian community can punish them more harshly for their sexual problems and mistake, mistakes than the heterosexuals can. If the gay and lesbian community can flog them more intensely and humiliate them for their sexual mistakes and problems, then they're better off joining the gays and lesbians. If you can't beat them, join them. In essence, the determination of whether to live gay or lesbian, or lesbian is determined by answering the question, who can inflict more pain on me? Individuals found out for gay or lesbian behavior believe that the social forces put on them by the gay and lesbian community are worse than the social forces put on them by the heterosexuals. For those that do not wish to be gay or lesbian, often the main problem is that they do not believe they can withstand the criticism and harassment about their past sexual behaviors from the gay and lesbian community. But their assessment of the pain they'll experience the rest of their lives is wrong. Individuals found out for gay or lesbian sex focus on which people, the gays and lesbians or the heterosexuals, can make their lives more miserable. They're looking for the path of least resistance. However, if they're interested in having a decent or better life after being found out for gay or lesbian sex, their focus should be placed in determining whether and to what degree they've seriously hurt or attempted to seriously hurt heterosexuals with high power antennas and other gay and lesbian tactics and what it takes to repair what they've done. Rational heterosexuals in most cases can only hold gays and lesbian sexual mistakes against them so much. Past gay or lesbian sex can be truly irrelevant if the gays and lesbians have abandoned them along with all aspects of gay and lesbian culture for a sufficient period of time. But what is of more concern than the sexual mistakes are the tactics that are mainstays of the gay and lesbian community, including violations of privacy with high power antennas and the attempts to destroy the lives of heterosexuals. The majority of gays and lesbians don't want other gays and lesbians around unless they'll participate in unnecessary and harsh behavior towards other gays and lesbians and towards heterosexuals. Gays and lesbians don't want other gays and lesbians to simply tolerate what they're saying or plotting or doing. Gays and lesbians want other gays and lesbians to behave that way too. And once gays and lesbians have participated to a significant degree in hurting heterosexuals, according to gay and lesbian tactics, they will lose the respect and support of heterosexuals. At that point, the road to a decent or, or better life meaning a heterosexual life, will depend almost entirely on what it takes for the gays and lesbians to repair what they've done to heterosexuals. Upon being confronted with their words and behaviors, many gays and lesbians will continue to act badly to make it look like hurting heterosexuals with those tactics is simply how they are and how things must be. That defiant behavior, it is hoped, will provide a reason for heterosexuals to stay away from them. So what is society to do? Allow people to be gay or lesbian because they won't or can't right their hurtful actions towards heterosexuals? Never. And society cannot simply leave gays and lesbians alone or tolerate gay and lesbian sex and culture at all. Many people that have gay or lesbian sex have it with the understanding that nobody will find out about it. Some even think they can have the gay or lesbian sex undiscovered while they're waiting for the right person of the opposite sex to come along, or until they improve certain things that are wrong or lacking in their lives, 
or keeping them from wanting to be in a significant relationship with someone of the opposite sex. Sometimes it's just two people having gay or lesbian sex. Other times, more people are involved. In some situations, it starts out with two people, but the number increases as those participants start recruiting or finding others that are also participating or are willing to participate in gay or lesbian sex. However, as the number of participants grows, so do the chances that one of the participants will tell or that they'll be discovered. Sometimes one participant tells others about the gay or lesbian sex that he or she is having with someone, and the person that he or she is having gay or lesbian sex with doesn't realize that the information is not being kept secret. Sometimes someone that is not involved in those behaviors, for example, parents, siblings, or friends, discover the gay or lesbian sex and tells others. Sometimes one of the participants has the intention right from the start of telling others. The newer participants are tricked by those that have already had gay or lesbian sex with others into thinking they'll have secrecy. Some of the participants give in to the gay or lesbian sex thinking that they'll receive information and other benefits that will improve their lives, such as high power antennas and economic opportunities while obtaining secrecy for the sex. They realize they were tricked when the benefits don't come and their participation in gay or lesbian sex has been spread throughout the gay and lesbian community. This is a common tactic among gays and lesbians. It thereafter becomes difficult for them to return to heterosexual living when the people they had gay or lesbian sex with continue to take their gay or lesbian sex experiences out on the town. Being tricked creates shame, embarrassment, humiliation, and hopelessness. I stated earlier that most gays and lesbians are that way because of voluntary gay or lesbian sex in their younger years. This reminds me of behaviors that babies have in common with older children and teenagers. Babies like picking up things and putting them in their mouths. But that doesn't mean they like choking to death, which is exactly what happens sometimes. Likewise, children and teenagers like picking up the sexual behaviors that they see on television and the internet and in magazines, especially in the pornography, and putting those behaviors into their lives. But that doesn't mean they want to end up living according to gay and lesbian culture that kills their dreams requires that they commit fraud for the rest of their lives and live in defiance to the heterosexual world. It doesn't mean they want to destroy their ability to stand up for what is right and influence and change the world for the better. Now I want to talk some more about gay and lesbian behaviors towards heterosexuals. Gays and lesbians want to obstruct and undermine the lives of all heterosexuals, especially those that they perceive as having too much influence, power, or success, or are opposed to gays and lesbians, while keeping heterosexuals from figuring out who they are and what they're doing. The gays and lesbians hope that the obstruction and undermining will cause the heterosexuals to look for help, and gays and lesbians will attempt to use those opportunities to get heterosexuals found out in one way or another. I have heard that many years ago, gays and lesbians were generally more accommodating to heterosexuals that were having problems of the kind that could potentially disrupt and uncover gay and lesbian culture. An example of this kind of problem is the situation I had with the crazy family mentioned earlier. I've also heard that years ago, the closeted gays and lesbians acted more friendly towards and fit in better with heterosexuals. Until recent years, more of the closeted gays and lesbians would initially be friendly and try to assist heterosexuals that had problems that could potentially disrupt or uncover their culture or were having problems with the openly gays and lesbians. 
Closeted gays and lesbians would try to influence those heterosexuals to respond to the problems in ways that were most favorable to the gay and lesbian community. If they failed, they would start acting more harshly toward the heterosexual to satisfy the gays and lesbians. Gays and lesbians intentionally create and use negative incidents with heterosexuals to win recognition or affirmation within the gay and lesbian community, much like a gambler uses tokens in a slot machine to win money. I'll explain later how these incidents must fit within certain rules of the gay and lesbian community. Closeted lesbians target heterosexual men to make them look like losers and bad people for not giving in to them. A closeted lesbian will masquerade as a heterosexual woman to a heterosexual man that thinks he has the opportunity to have a romantic relationship or sex with her or father a child with her. The closeted lesbian creates a fake challenge or ridiculous standards that the heterosexual man is supposed to go along with or follow in order to have a relationship or sex with her or a child with her, including requiring him to compromise his moral or religious beliefs, stay away from certain of his friends that are a threat to gays and lesbians, or lessen the time and effort that he gives to particular activities. <clears throat> when the heterosexual man doesn't comply or doesn't understand what he's supposed to be doing, then the closeted lesbian will criticize the heterosexual man as not understanding women, as being insensitive, selfish, jealous, misogynist, that he doesn't like girls, he's a loser. Oftentimes, the closeted lesbian will try to make the heterosexual man jealous by having a closeted gay man come around and spend time with her, making it look like she has other heterosexual men that she is choosing from and spending time with. These targeted attempts by closeted lesbians against heterosexual men are undertaken for many purposes, including Number one, to injure the reputation of a heterosexual man that is viewed as having too much influence, power, or success. Number two, to provide ammunition for the gay and lesbian community, especially the closeted gays and lesbians, with which to criticize the heterosexual man throughout society. Thirdly, to set the stage for a situation in which, after the heterosexual man is rejected, the closeted lesbian will choose a closeted gay man in which to have a fraudulent romantic relationship with, thereby making it look like the closeted gay man possesses all the qualities that the heterosexual man is lacking. These targeted attempts by closeted lesbians against heterosexual men are also undertaken to act badly in order to ward off other heterosexual men from being interested in her, which will give the closeted lesbian less interference to live her closeted lesbian life. Many closeted lesbians don't believe they'll ever get out from gay and lesbian culture, so they see it as a benefit to keep heterosexual men from being interested in them at all. These targeted attempts are undertaken to enable her closeted lesbian friends to use her behaviors toward heterosexual men as reasons to tell other people why heterosexual men should not be interested in her. Her closeted lesbian friends don't want her to have too much respect and good treatment among heterosexuals because a gay or lesbian that has that will be treated less favorably by other gays and lesbians. And lastly, these targeted attempts by closeted lesbians against heterosexual men are undertaken to figure out what makes the heterosexual man mad. Gays and lesbians try to get heterosexuals found out sexually. Two formerly closeted lesbian sisters are known for trying to trick or induce heterosexual girls into showing their breasts to men or having sex with men. They try to make it look like that's what the heterosexual should do. Everybody's doing it, and it's the only right thing to do. <clears throat> also, 
the formerly closeted lesbian sisters devised a plot to induce heterosexual men to have gay sex with some of their gay friends as a precondition to having sex with them. Gays and lesbians want heterosexuals to get found out sexually, have sexual embarrassments, to participate in sexual activity that causes shame. But if a heterosexual doesn't have those sexual experiences, or if the gays and lesbians can't negatively influence a heterosexual's actions or words by using his sexual problems and embarrassments against him, then they'll try to frustrate him by other bad or embarrassing things he's done in life. What the gays and lesbians hope is that they'll be able to negatively influence heterosexuals to the point of getting them to treat others in the same way. Gays and lesbians routinely disrespect heterosexuals while trying to accomplish their objectives. If gays and lesbians try to advance in more honorable ways, other gays and lesbians will criticize and punish them because the more honorable ways are considered to be reminiscent of biblical morals and ethics and not defiant enough. There are women that, although the last time they had lesbian sex was many years in the past, will still not have romantic relationships with heterosexual men. These women may fairly be considered heterosexual, but because of their former lesbian sex, they will not date or have a romantic relationship with a heterosexual man. This is due in part to the shame that I mentioned earlier. They do not want the heterosexual men to know about their former lesbian behaviors. Also, they do not want their former lesbian sex partners to be jealous or envious of them and take their former lesbian behavior out on the town. If they do not become involved with a heterosexual man, their former lesbian partners will not talk about their former behaviors as much or remind them of the lesbian sex as much. Also, their former lesbian partners may still be participating in lesbian sex, whether openly or closeted, and they view their former lesbian sex partner being with a heterosexual man as insufficiently defiant towards heterosexuals. These formerly lesbian women that are now heterosexual will often choose a man with similar problems to have a fraudulent heterosexual marriage or other relationship with in which there is no sexual intercourse. But many of the men and women in fraudulent heterosexual couples are still having gay or lesbian sex with others, but no heterosexual sex at all with each other. Gays and lesbians do not want other gays and lesbians to have heterosexual sex at all. Gays and lesbians that have heterosexual sex will lose many benefits and status in the gay and lesbian community, even permanently. Gays and lesbians do not want other gays and lesbians to have heterosexual sex because it makes the gay and lesbian community look like it's not the only show in town. <clears throat> Some of the closeted gays and lesbians have no other opportunity to act badly or defiant towards heterosexuals, except while the closeted gays and lesbians are at work. Acting badly towards heterosexuals in these circumstances can cost the gays and lesbians professionally and economically. However, the gays and lesbians have to please the gay and lesbian community by saying or doing something negative towards heterosexuals when the opportunity arises. I have witnessed closeted gays and lesbians ruin their businesses and careers because of their defiant words and behaviors towards heterosexual supervisors, co-workers, customers, clients, and other professionals. The gays and lesbians know that their defiant behaviors can cost them their employment, their advancement, their reputations, or their entire businesses. But not acting defiantly in those situations can cause them loss of gay or lesbian sex or status in the gay and lesbian community, 
and subject them to increased amounts of harassment from other gays and lesbians. This is related to something I'll discuss in more detail later. The promotion of very high tax rates and high amounts of support for collectivist or communist systems of government by the gay and lesbian community. As part of their defiance towards heterosexuals, gays and lesbians have an official duty to leak information to other gays and lesbians about the heterosexuals they're interacting with. Gays and lesbians will lose status and benefits within the gay and lesbian community if they do not fulfill this duty. But gays and lesbians do not want the heterosexuals they're interacting with to think that they are interested in getting the information. This will only give credibility and respect to heterosexuals. Therefore, the gays and lesbians try to induce the heterosexuals to give the information without much inquiry from the gays and lesbians. Gays and lesbians will also rely on eavesdropping or use various kinds of technology, such as high power antennas, to obtain the information. Gays and lesbians are suppo supposed to obtain as much information as possible from other gays and lesbians. This is especially true for information about heterosexuals. The gay and lesbian community wants gays and lesbians to get their information from gays and lesbians and to accept and propagate the answers from other gays and lesbians as much as possible, even if they know that information is wrong or unsubstantiated. Gays and lesbians are supposed to choose the gay and lesbian answers over the heterosexual answers. And the answers that make heterosexuals look worse than other answers as often as possible. This is part of the gay and lesbian culture of fraud and defiance and explains my observation of gays and lesbians, lesbians being so wrong about so many things so often. When we consider the systematic and intentional propagation of false information, it's easy to see that the gay and lesbian community is unpatriotic, dangerous to our freedom, and morally depraved. Some gays and lesbians want to be the groups of gays and lesbians whose function is to criticize a particular heterosexual, like me, who is not supportive of them and is seen as having too much power or influence in the community. These groups of gays and lesbians are supposed to act as my constant critics, countering as much as possible whatever I say or do. They are supposed to be the groups within the gay and lesbian community and the community at large that know what to say or do to anger me, and serve as the homes of all damaging information about me. The gays and lesbians in these groups will often explain their actions by saying that people can't make it too easy on me, that you can't just let someone like me say and do what he wants because he'll be too powerful or think he's better than other people. But their aim is not simply to keep people in check because they think it's necessary. Rather, their aim is to destroy the purposes and reputations and influence of the people they're criticizing and gain attention and power for themselves. Oftentimes, one or more of these groups will be composed of the people that the heterosexual person grew up with that picked on, bullied, ostracized, or harassed the heterosexual they are criticizing. It is likely that the heterosexual they are criticizing doesn't even know that those people he or she grew up with were and are behaving according to gay and lesbian culture. <clears throat> gays and lesbians want to observe how heterosexuals will react when the gays and lesbians criticize them or try to frustrate their lives. Gays and lesbians don't want heterosexuals to respond with violence or behavior that is too harsh. However, 
that might make the gays and lesbians that said or did the bad things stop saying or doing them. But if heterosexuals respond to the gays and lesbians with moderate levels of criticism or trash talking in return, then they'll continue to criticize the heterosexuals or act against them. This is good for the gays and lesbians because it makes them look like they've got something negative going on with heterosexuals, one of the intentionally created negative incidents I mentioned earlier. If heterosexuals ignore the gays and lesbians, the gays and lesbians will constantly criticize them until they get a desired response and make it look like they have power over them and can keep them shut up, as if they've intimidated them. Also, if heterosexuals remain silent or don't do enough about the gays and lesbians' criticisms and actions against them, then they will sometimes increase the intensity, absurdity, illegality, and immorality of what they're doing. Now I want to talk in more de detail about gays and lesbians' behaviors towards each other. Trash talking is a cornerstone of the closeted gays and lesbians mating ritual. <clears throat> the trash talking disguises the process that closeted gays and lesbians use for determining who wants to have sex. Closeted gays and lesbians don't usually speak openly with sexually suggestive language towards other gays and lesbians, especially if they're in the presence of heterosexuals. For closeted gays and lesbians, determining who wants to have sex must be done in a less obvious manner. They can identify other interested closeted gays and lesbians by their willingness to speak in the same manner and go along with the trash talking. <clears throat> in addition, trash talking can help closeted gays and lesbians determine who the heterosexuals are. If the targets of the trash talking become too angry or violent, then they're not gays or lesbians. However, if the heterosexuals confront the closeted gays and lesbians, the gays and lesbians might still be able to find out what the heterosexuals know about them and their culture. Sometimes the gays and lesbians will talk trash to a heterosexual with the hope that the heterosexual will respond with trash talking and other behavior that will make the heterosexual less respected among heterosexuals. Getting a heterosexual to participate in the trash talking and other bad behavior is the beginning of another ritual that is supposed to undermine the heterosexual's life to the point where only gays and lesbians are willing to associate with the heterosexual. Gays and lesbians are typically antagonistic towards each other. But the gay and lesbian community is also very collectivist in its thought and practice. It does not want individual gays and lesbians or groups of gays and lesbians to succeed too much without the entire gay and lesbian community benefiting. As I mentioned earlier, gays and lesbians believe that gay or lesbian sex and the negative effects that follow have damaged them in many ways. And the gay and lesbian community can't tolerate individual gays and lesbians or groups of gays and lesbians that have surpassed the damaging effects of the sexual behaviors that keep other gays and lesbians from achieving the same. After gay or lesbian sex has ended among its participants, they often continue to antagonize each other. Former participants in gay or lesbian sex are sometimes a combination of openly gay or lesbian, closeted gay or lesbian, and heterosexual. So the antagonism, humiliation, and harassment that exists among former gay or lesbian sex partners varies, depending upon their current sexual orientation and whether they are closeted or openly gay or lesbian. Often at the bottom of many former closeted gay or lesbian sex partners is an openly gay or lesbian. 
This gives the openly gay or lesbian a unique ability to exercise control over former gay or lesbian sex partners that are now closeted gays or lesbians, or heterosexuals. The former partners that are now closeted gays or lesbians must be sure to not say anything offensive about gays and lesbians. So do the heterosexuals that were former gay and lesbian sex partners if they want to avoid having their past behaviors taken out on the town. But one big difference is that the openly gays and lesbians can keep their former gay or lesbian sex partners that are now closeted gays or lesbians from getting gay or lesbian sex by spreading their negative statements against gays and lesbians throughout the gay and lesbian community. Also, openly gays and lesbians might reveal information about the closeted gays and lesbians that they want hidden. Many closeted gays and lesbians admire the openly gays and lesbians, but the closeted gays and lesbians don't want the criticism and interaction with heterosexuals that comes with being openly gay or lesbian. The closeted gays and lesbians believe that being openly gay or lesbian, while admirable, is the very quality that heterosexuals attack when they have problems with an openly gay or lesbian. Gays and lesbians can keep other gays and lesbians from criticizing them too harshly in various ways, including one, not trying too hard to gain and not gaining too much influence, power, or success, and two, by interacting with heterosexuals appropriately. The more influence, power, or success that a gay or lesbian obtains, the more intense the criticism, trash-talking, and demands from other gays and lesbians. This is supposed to induce the gay or lesbian that is the subject of the criticism to respond by doing the same, thereby beginning the mating ritual and keeping them distracted and occupied with responding to the criticism. A gay or lesbian or heterosexual with too much influence, power, or success in one matter is, is expected by gays and lesbians to be submissive in all other matters, unless called upon to do something by gays and lesbians. This rationing of achievement and collectivism exemplifies the gay and lesbian community. Also, a gay or lesbian that has not interacted with heterosexuals appropriately and has brought too much negative attention from heterosexuals or any negative attention and criticism on gay and lesbian culture will not be able to move within gay and lesbian circles and obtain the sexual and other benefits that the gay or lesbian formerly received. Gays and lesbians attempt to use intentionally negative incidents with heterosexuals to win recognition or affirmation within the gay and lesbian community. But a gay or lesbian doesn't want too much attention from a negative incident with a heterosexual because it will cause other gays and lesbians to react negatively. Similarly, gays and lesbians don't want heterosexuals to repeat too much important information or powerful truth in their presence. Other gays and lesbians will expect them to talk to them about it, but if the gays and lesbians that heard the important information or powerful truth get too much recognition or attention for talking to other gays and lesbians about it, then it will evoke the envy of other gays and lesbians and bring negative results. It has been suggested that many of the women that have abortions are closeted lesbians that become impregnated via artificial insemination with a gay man or closeted gay man's semen. This is also the process that many closeted lesbians use to get pregnant even when they plan on having the child. But if true, why do the closeted lesbians have the abortions? I believe Two of the reasons are as follows. The abortion is an act of defiance, 
that will make it easier for the closeted lesbian to live a closeted lesbian life. When the closeted lesbians believe that the negative effects of lesbian sex and culture are inescapable, having an abortion is an act of defiance designed to scare away heterosexuals. It is much like the situation mentioned earlier, where the closeted lesbian will target a heterosexual man to mistreat in order to give her a bad reputation among heterosexuals, but ultimately make it easier to live her closeted lesbian life. But now it is the fetus that is being used to discourage heterosexuals from wanting to have anything to do with her. Secondly, the abortion is an act of defiance designed to diminish the values of the heterosexual world. Closeted lesbians will talk about having an abortion in order to get heterosexuals to talk about them and to them about having an abortion or having the child. Having an abortion is the closeted lesbian's way of making the heterosexuals who tried to persuade them from having the abortion feel like they couldn't give the closeted lesbians what they needed. It is also su supposed to make the values of the heterosexuals, in particular biblical values, appear unfulfilling and not good enough. It has also been suggested that closeted lesbians and fraudulent heterosexual couples are behind some of the cases of sudden infant death syndrome and other cases in which a parent or parents kill their children. Many of them are suffering from their gay and lesbian sexual problems and culture, but decide to have a child anyway in order to look more heterosexual or to satisfy their families. Some gays and lesbians even believe that having children will make their lives better. However, in the gay and lesbian community, those with children are generally not looked upon as favorably as those without. And even with the addition of children, the negative effects of gay and lesbian sex and culture remain and are even intensified when gays and lesbians have children. Fraudulent heterosexuals are not supposed to have any heterosexual sex with each other. However, if heterosexual sex occurs, they will be heavily criticized by other gays and lesbians. By giving validity to heterosexual behavior, they may permanently lose good standing in the gay and lesbian community. Also, fraudulent heterosexual couples often do not want people to ask them about their sexual activity with each other. There are many fraudulent heterosexual marriages in which both spouses are having gay or lesbian sex with others but are not having heterosexual sex with each other. There are also fraudulent heterosexual marriages in which both the husband and wife were found out for gay or lesbian sex in their earlier years and are no longer having gay or lesbian sex with others, or heterosexual sex with each other. The effects of being found out for gay or lesbian sex earlier in life discourage them from participating in any sexual activity or significant sexual activity at all. These married couples have either no children at all or children as a result of artificial insemination. Some of these couples claim that they can't have children. Some people believe that just because a parent is gay or lesbian doesn't make it any more likely that the child will be gay or lesbian and that the sexual orientation of a parent is not a factor in a child's adjustment. These beliefs are indisputably wrong. A gay or lesbian parent is a defiant parent, def defiant towards all things heterosexual. In order to be defiant towards heterosexuals in a way that pleases gays and lesbians, Gay or lesbian parents must pass their defiance to their children. That means that the child of a gay or lesbian parent is not supposed to be heterosexual. A gay or lesbian parent that has a child is considered by the gay and lesbian community as having too much that is against being gay or lesbian 
because a child requires both man and woman to be born, which reflects heterosexuality. Therefore, gays and lesbians are generally harder on other gays and lesbians that have children. But to make up for having children, the children are supposed to be gay or lesbian. Gay and lesbian parents also teach their kids to not try too hard because they won't get the best treatment from the collectivist gay and lesbian community. Gay and lesbian parents instill in their children all of the negative qualities typical among gays and lesbians in order to corral their children into being gay or lesbian. For these reasons and more, a gay or lesbian parent is a bad parent. I have heard of families in which one single gay or lesbian parent or a fraudulent heterosexual couple has a child that is resisting the gay and lesbian values that the parent or parents are trying to instill. In some of these families there exist one or more children that are succumbing, succumbing to the gay and lesbian influence and one or more children that aren't. I believe this can lead to a tumultuous and sad childhood for the child that is resisting gay and lesbian influence. But because of the defiant nature of gays and lesbians, the parents cannot give the child that has not succumbed to gay or lesbian values as favorable of treatment as the child that has. This is child abuse. Gays and lesbians want everyone to be found out with relevant gay or lesbian sex. Many gays and lesbians believe that only in this way can they have true equality in our society. Gays and lesbians believe that their gay or lesbian sex won't and cannot be used against them effectively by people that also have the relevant gay or lesbian sex in their lives. Gays and lesbians do not want there to be people in our society that do not have the relevant gay or lesbian sex that can be held over their heads in order to discourage them from opposing gays and lesbians. In particular, anal sex plays a very important role for closeted and openly gays and lesbians. Anal sex given to or received by a person are humiliating sexual activities that will allow the gays and lesbians to have, to have power over that person in the future. Also, for both closeted and openly gays and lesbians, anal sex is a precondition for receiving basic acceptance in the gay and lesbian community. It is used as a teaching tool of sorts. If you want basic acceptance interaction and information from closeted and openly gays and lesbians, then you must first give them something they can use against you in the future, which is anal sex. Now that closeted gay and lesbian culture has been exposed, most of the closeted gays and lesbians have decided not to live as openly gays and lesbians. They typically will not discuss their past gay or lesbian sex with heterosexuals, and a large number of them will not have gay or lesbian sex again until the current climate has passed. Being found out for gay or lesbian sex has seriously disrupted their lives and brought too much negative attention on behaviors that they want hidden. Being found out can also expose other gays and lesbians around them who worry that they too will be found out. Many of the closeted gays and lesbians that have been found out for gay or lesbian sex because of what I and others have said and done want to return to having gay or lesbian sex, but only after I and others have been shut up and our influence has been drastically reduced or eliminated. Many closeted gays and lesbians believe they can return to having gay or lesbian sex without much disruption only after the gay and lesbian community has harassed or disrupted the lives of people like me to the point where we no longer expose the evils of gay and lesbian sex or, and culture or until people like me and others participate in the relevant gay or lesbian sex.
Many closeted gays and lesbians are waiting for the lack of leadership by heterosexuals on gay and lesbian issues to return to their former ways of life. Shame and embarrassment caused by using vibrators and dildos are reasons some women choose to be lesbians or to not have any romantic relationships with heterosexual men for the rest of their lives. The women do not want to become involved with heterosexual men because they don't want to have to explain their use of vibrators and dildos if the men learn about it. Also, some of the women that use vibrators and dildos will use those experiences to try to get other women that participated to respond to them the way they desire, even if that means threatening to reveal their past sexual behaviors to the public. Many of these women believe that it's impossible to have a normal relationship with a man if it's publicly known that a woman used vibrators and dildos, at least with men that the woman desires to be with. I want to talk now about gay and lesbian influence in our society. Gay and lesbian defiance against heterosexuals is a huge part of the coarsening of America. The degree to which neighbors are distant from each other is often due to gay and lesbian defiance and the secrecy desired by closeted gays and lesbians. Additionally, because the gay and lesbian community is secretive in their collectivist or communist beliefs, it has been able to have a significant negative effect on the political discourse between liberals and conservatives, Republicans and Democrats, without a full understanding of the negativity being discovered by heterosexuals. It is the collectivist and immoral beliefs of the gay and lesbian community that are separating rational Americans of different political parties who share many beliefs and destroying the ability of those Americans to accomplish national objectives. Gay and lesbian culture has a significant negative effect on all its participants, regardless of a person's economic standing, educational level, or profession. Some gays and lesbians have more money or influence than others. However, they share the self-destructive, fraudulent, and defiant behaviors that are cornerstones of gay and lesbian culture. Attorneys and judges that are openly or closeted gays and lesbians contribute to the decaying of this country by promoting the most ridiculous interpretations of the U.S. Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It is not logic or wisdom that underlies their legal philosophy but the same fraudulent behavior, defiance against heterosexuals, and fear of gays and lesbians. They devise the most absurd interpretations of the Constitution and Bill of Rights, interpretations that are not grounded in truth and the experience of the American people. They argue that legal precedent must be followed in our courts, even if that legal precedent is not based in observable proof or science. This is fraud on the American people. The information that I am presenting comprehensively cancels and destroys the existing legal arguments that expound support and tolerance for gay and lesbian sex and culture. And no person that is a gay or lesbian or in fear of gays and lesbians should ever be an attorney or a judge. And then there are the closeted gays and lesbians in the communications and journalism professions. We've all heard of the liberal bias in the media. I believe there is a liberal bias, but I also believe it's more accurate to call it a closeted gay and lesbian bias. This bias is also fraud on the American people. I also believe it is impossible that closeted gay and lesbian public school teachers can be impartial in their teaching. In particular, I believe that children and college students that are not supportive of gays and lesbians are at risk of not being treated as good as children and college students that are supportive of gays and lesbians or are themselves openly or closeted gays and lesbians.
I've seen how gay or lesbian sex and culture can ruin the freedom and achievements of educated, white-collar professionals and make them a burden on our society. What effects do they have among those, <clears throat> among those of lower income in our society? Based on the evidence, it's absolutely right to infer that the destructive effects of gay or lesbian sex and culture make it substantially more difficult or impossible for people to escape poverty and be less of an economic burden on local, state, and federal governments. The economic hopelessness that many gays and lesbians experience is one of the main reasons why they are collectivist or communist in their political beliefs. Ending and discouraging participation in, in gay or lesbian sex and culture among those living below, at, or near the poverty level is a huge part of winning the war on poverty, perhaps the biggest part. Then there are the people that enter the United States illegally from other nations. A huge number of these people come here poor, live their lives poor, and die poor. They place a significant burden upon the resources of this nation. How many of them are suffering from the destructive effects of gay or lesbian sex and culture? Do we know the role that gay or lesbian sex and culture has in their home countries and on the reasons why they are leaving their countries? Based upon what I know about the destructive effects of gay or lesbian culture on individuals and nations, it is unpatriotic and economic suicide to allow people to come to this nation without first knowing the answers to those questions. It cannot be repeated too many times that gays and lesbians do not want people, whether gay, lesbian, or heterosexual, to be too influential, powerful, or successful. Gays and lesbians are envious and jealous of such people and are constantly attempting to ration influence, power, and success in whatever situations they are present. Also, gays and lesbians do not believe there are enough good things in the world to allow people to pursue happiness with too much effort and obtain too much of it, even if they do so within good moral and ethical boundaries. They also believe that their gay and lesbian sex and culture has significantly damaged their abilities to compete fairly with others for power, influence, and success. The negative psychological and other effects of gay and lesbian sex and culture makes competing with others on fair grounds very difficult or impossible. And one of the favorite methods gays and lesbians use to ration influence, power, and success is to habitually lie in order to undermine people who they believe have too much in life. But there are more subtle methods that gays and lesbians use to ration influence, power, and success. In particular, gays and lesbians promote high taxation as a means to obtain more benefits and power in this society. High taxation will bring about more uniformity among the citizenry, which is exactly what gays and lesbians want. Gays and lesbians' support for high taxation is also a result of their defiance. Because of the negative effects of gay or lesbian sex and culture, part of it they blame on subsequent treatment by heterosexuals, they want the system to support them as much as possible. High taxation destroys individualism the good individualism that our country was designed to support. Currently, one of the most important ways that gays and lesbians believe they can increase taxation is to support illegal immigration and amnesty or citizenship for the illegal immigrants currently in this country. It's not just that more people means the need for higher taxation. It's the fact that the vast majority of illegals come to this country poor, they live their lives poor, and they die poor. The illegals will need substantial benefits from local, state, and federal governments. And how much tax do the illegals contribute? Very little or none at all. Therefore, the increased taxation will be obtained from the middle income and upper income brackets, which are already taxed higher than they should be.
Gays and lesbians are opposed to free market capitalism and free enterprise, even more so when they don't include high taxation. The idea of the individual free to pursue his or her purposes in life, free to pursue happiness and money within good moral and ethical standards, with low taxation and minimal government involvement, and without having to tolerate and bend to gay and lesbian culture in the process, is unacceptable to gays and lesbians. This sort of free market capitalism and free enterprise doesn't give gays and lesbians enough power to insert the level of defiance that will have an acceptable negative effect upon the system. And they're fearful of not having the high taxation that will make up for the disastrous effects of gay and lesbian sex and culture in such a system. Gays and lesbians have a dislike for not only individuals that have too much power, influence, or success, but also certain institutions that possess those qualities. The Catholic Church is probably the most hated Christian church of all, with many of the so-called megachurches of various denominations following close behind. The Catholic Church is viewed by gays and lesbians as being too wealthy, powerful, and widespread across the globe, and overbearing in its ceremonies and processions. That is why the gays and lesbians that do attend church favor those that are not just fraudulent churches because they tolerate gays and lesbians, but are also modest in practice and procedure. I believe that gays and lesbians that do attend churches that are strongly disliked by the gay and lesbian community are only there for negative purposes. Gays and lesbians want to make heterosexuals afraid of asking questions, afraid of trying new things that are not self-destructive or disrespectful to others, and afraid of pursuing the truth within good moral and ethical boundaries. Gays and lesbians believe that by succeeding in these areas, they can influence society to a greater extent, have bigger pieces of the pie for themselves, and take control of more information. If gays and lesbians can succeed at promoting a culture that discourages others from asking questions, speaking directly to others, and communicating with pure language, then they can have a greater influence on what many people actually believe. Gays and lesbians take advantage of people's fear of speaking directly to others, and by the fact that many people do not have enough time and connections to get the truth from the right sources. We know that gay and lesbian culture is intentionally unjust, illegal, and immoral towards heterosexuals. The coarsening of society and various illegal and immoral tactics against heterosexuals, including high power antennas, has been exposed. But at one time, heterosexuals didn't know that it was the gays and lesbians that were responsible for these negative effects in society and in their lives. The main reason is that heterosexuals didn't understand the role of closeted gays and lesbians, and the gays and lesbians didn't tell us. They didn't tell us because gays and lesbians view heterosexuals as their enemies and don't think the coarsening is bad for them because it's viewed as necessary in winning the culture war against heterosexuals. And gays and lesbians believed they were winning the culture war against heterosexuals until recently. So knowing what we know, what do we do next? First of all, any technology, including high power antennas, that allows people to listen in to the homes and businesses of other people should be illegal because it is contradictory to a free society. Also, the companies that manufacture these products should be questioned by our legislators. 
It is my belief that until recently, the majority of Americans did not have knowledge of the invasive capabilities of the high power antennas. And it's, it's going to be hard to convince them that the companies that manufactured, distributed, and sold the high power antennas did not know that they had such capabilities. Secondly, we need stronger privacy laws in our society. Privacy should be a civil right. Even if only one out of every 1,000 or 10,000 words could be heard with the high power antennas, that's still too many. People should have a civil right to be free in their homes and businesses from that kind of intrusion. The high power antennas have been and are being used by gays and lesbians to commit acts of domestic terrorism upon their fellow citizens. I am reminded of the Fourth Amendment which states, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. The Fourth Amendment protects us from the acts of government agents. However, the threat to the American people caused by gays and lesbians' use of high-power antennas is no less destructive or contrary to the spirit of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights. My strong support of privacy rights worries gays and lesbians because they comprise a significant number of the people that use such technology to hurt, harass, humiliate, and get power over others. The gays and lesbians do those things because they're being defiant towards heterosexuals, hiding their perverse sexual behaviors, and gathering information about people that aren't gay or lesbian. I truly believe that if you were to look back in time, 20, 40, 50 years ago, whatever was the latest technology that enabled people to violate other people's privacy to a significant extent, the gays and lesbians were using it in substantial numbers. Thirdly, Because gay and lesbian sex and culture is so destructive, fraudulent, defiant, and contrary to freedom, and because for so many of its participants it is based in gay or lesbian sex in childhood that is regretted, gay and lesbian behaviors and support therefore should immediately be made illegal in our society. In all our institutions, including federal, state, and local governments, public schools, all branches of the military, and all other functions of government. Gay and lesbian sex and culture should not be tolerated. I believe that because of the destructive nature and effects that gay and lesbian sex and culture have on the participants, there should be a constitutional amendment that bans gay and lesbian behaviors and any kind of support therefore. I think the president should immediately issue an executive order to all governmental and law enforcement agencies stopping the enforcement of all laws and policies that are protective or supportive or tolerant of gay and lesbian sex and culture. Those laws are the result of fraud committed by the gays and lesbians on the rest of this country. Gay and lesbian culture is incompatible with real freedom which is the goal of our Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and Bill of Rights. Also, fraudulent behavior should not be given the status of an unalienable or fundamental right. The information that I have presented, along with the lack of scientific proof that gay and lesbian behavior is genetically or chemically determined, can serve as an impenetrable foundation for state and federal legislation banning gay and lesbian behaviors and any support therefore. And lastly, there should not be any Christian church in this country that is tolerant of gays and lesbians. Any church that is tolerant of gays and lesbians is not a Christian church. Any church that is tolerant of gays and lesbians is a church that does not understand the role of the cross and morality in Christianity. 
Such churches should not even use the Bible or have any pictures, statues, or other depictions of anything in the Bible within their walls. Furthermore, such churches should not have any references to the Bible or Christianity in their names or services or practices. Every person in a leadership position in any Christian church should regularly speak against gay and lesbian sex and culture. There should be no person in a leadership position in any Christian church that is afraid to speak against and confront gay and lesbian sex and culture, especially if their past sexual problems are the reason. Also, it should be known which churches are tolerant of gays and lesbians, and those churches should be shunned. Gay and lesbian culture, the defiant monster, has been exposed. The gay and lesbian surge has failed. There is no rational or intelligent reason to tolerate or support gay and lesbian sex and culture. Gays and lesbians use high power antennas to commit acts of domestic terrorism upon heterosexuals. I believe that God has used the high power antennas to show the world that gays and lesbians are the dogs and pigs of our society and gay and lesbian sex and culture should never be tolerated. Praise the Lord.